Hello and welcome to The Bike Show. I thought we'd start this week's episode with something of a milestone. Honda, very recently, has just produced its 300 millionth motorcycle. That's a heck of a milestone for one of the greats, one of the heavyweights of the industry. So how did they celebrate? Maybe like BMW when they were celebrating 90 years in business, they built this beautiful concept type bike called the R9T. Very nice too. Honda, well, they haven't done anything like that. But is that necessarily a bad thing? Honda have a reputation for being slightly conservative. The bikes are brilliantly engineered, but they just lack a bit of soul and passion. This is the VFR 800. Been around for 28 years, but this is a brand new for 2015 model. So have Honda broken the mold with this bike? Um, that's a no. Given the opportunity to unleash the hounds of hell, and set off the biggest fireworks display the world has ever seen to mark such an incredible milestone, Honda have actually chosen to revamp one of the most boring sports tourers ever and turn it into uh, one of the most boring sports tourers ever. Honda claims that almost everything except the main frame and engine has been replaced for 2015. It's got new manually adjustable suspension at both ends. There are new wheels with thinner spokes and a new brace on top of the single-sided swing arm to add stiffness. The steel subframe is now die-cast aluminium, saving two kilograms. The twin underseat exhausts have been replaced by a single silencer on the right, saving another five kilograms, if not exactly adding to the looks. It's got ABS, traction control, heated grips, self-cancelling indicators, a funky new dash, and height-adjustable pillion and rider seats. Everything, in fact, except a dash of devil-may-care personality. The bodywork, despite the paintwork being flawless, is featureless to the point of boredom. While I'm no fan of shouty graphics on a bike, in this case it couldn't have hurt Honda to have thought of something in the way of go-faster stripes, if only to break up the vast expanses of nothingness. So, nothing whatsoever there to indicate that Honda have broken out a bottle of the strong stuff, had a party in the design studio and said to hell with the way we do things. Let's have some fun with this one. Look, before I'm hung, drawn and quartered for expressing such heresy, let me say right here and now that there's nothing actually wrong with this bike. Indeed, there is a lot that's very right with it, but it's so well hidden underneath that bland exterior and character that you really need to live with it for a while to discover any qualities. And qualities there are. Beautifully engineered and put together, absolutely perfect paint, that wonderful engine, a chassis that behaves impeccably, Great brakes, good ergonomics, and undoubted mile-munching ability. The VFR can't be faulted on any of these points. But at no point do you look at it and go, my God, I've got to ride that bike. The thing about the VFR is, when you first see it, it's a bit of a plain Jane. It's like almost to the point of boredom. And when you first ride it, it's a little bit underwhelming. But spend a bit more time with it, and it starts to show its real qualities. The styling is elegantly simple, let's put it that way. And the engine, well, if you give it its head, it's actually a cracking little unit. This is a bike that just doesn't shout about its qualities. Oh, who am I fooling? This isn't a bike that would ever shout about its qualities because the qualities it does have are also boringly efficient that everyone would just laugh if you tried to boast about them. Fine, so there's nothing wrong with being efficient and probably, for many motorcyclists out there, this is exactly the type of motorcycle they're looking for. But, just as I'm not gonna get excited about a Ford Mondeo, as good as it is, when there's a Pagani Zonda to drool over, then I'm not gonna get excited about this VFR, as good as it is, when there's a Ducati Panigale or a Kawasaki H2 to drool over. OK, so they might be impractical and expensive, but until I'm 90 years old, I don't want practical and affordable. I want to feel alive.
So, have Honda broken the mold with the new VFR? Uh, no. Quite rightly, they've gone for more of the same because they know exactly where their strengths and weaknesses lie. And let's face it, when you've made 300 million motorcycles, you're not really going to change the recipe because you're obviously doing something right. The VFR, well, it feels grown up, sophisticated, sporty, it's elegant. There's actually nothing wrong with this bike. And that's exactly why the fans have been buying it for 28 years. You know, what I think impressed me most about that test, Harry, was the fact that you didn't, not at one single point, fall asleep. I had a dark visor, so you couldn't actually see that I was snoring away. It's not the... It's very worthy, but it's not... It's just not very exciting, the VFR, is it? It's not. It's beautifully made. It looks lovely. It's, it's just plain. It's just... And you ride it, and I did think it was going to grow. I mean, it did a little bit, but then it just came to an end. Well, a bit like a wart or yeah, something. Yes, so just something you just want to knock off, you know, in that. But it, no, it's not exciting. And it's an interesting kind of sport touring, all-round type of class of bike. Try and think of its natural competitors, and they won't spring to mind, obviously. Donovan, the Triumph have got a good one, haven't they? Yeah, the Triumph XR. I mean, that is, okay, everyone calls it an adventure bike, but let's be honest, I mean, it's more road. It's got mag wheels, it's got... Well, well that's because there is an XR yeah. and an XC, the yeah, XC the being XC the cross off road and the XR is on road. And that is, I mean, compared to the VFR, it's more upright, it, it has got the capability to occasionally go off-road, which it works in South Africa, because our roads sometimes turn into not roads, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Yeah. Uh, it's got electronics, the Triumph, and it's got a very, very characterful three-cylinder engine. Look, that's the best thing about the VFR, is its V4-iness. The V4 engine is lovely, and it has appeared in other bikes. I mean, the other sort of natural competitor would have been the Crossrunner. Yes, its own it's stable own mate. The Crossrunner, but they're not bringing that in anymore, because apparently too many owners <laughs> fell asleep. Oh, dear. And it was a danger on the roads. Killed by sleeping on a motorcycle. That's yeah. terrible. So they've had to withdraw it. That must have been an official Honda recall out there. It was. It? Actually, a yeah, worldwide recall. They put all, all three bikes. And when you fell asleep, it picked it up and, we yeah. and woke them up again. Yeah, so th <laughs> I think some of that last bit may not be true. However, moving on <laughs> to some of its more serious competitors, we've got BMW's F800. This used to be an S or an ST, but is now called a GT. It's quite a lovely looking thing. I used to, in, in a different guise, race this in Battle of the Twins. So I know the chassis is good. That it's wasn't you. Drive. Yes, it was me. No, it wasn't you. Didn't you take some people out on turn one? Yeah, so let's not <laughs> go back in. Fact. Let's not <laughs> concentrate on who did what to who. That's what I say. BMW 143 grand and comes with all the electronic extras, suspension and traction control stuff. So actually very good value. And, of course, there is Yamaha's Tracer, but we won't go into we that. We can't I think. talk about that. No, now. we'll be testing that in a couple of weeks on the show. So uh, we'll bang... Very good, though. Really, really very good. Well, you would say that, because you've been riding it. So, final verdict, VFR, 300 million bikes. They could have pushed the boat out just one more notch of excitement on it. Well, maybe 10. Actually, they could have gone, just made it exciting full stop. That would have been good.